Ahead in our next hour, GMSA drugs sweeping across the southern states, causing amputated limbs and severe side effects. Still ahead, what doctors are saying it's mixed with. And severe weather in California causing landslides and evacuations. Next at 6, a water rescue caught on camera. And we've got an incident popped up on 35 at Von Army. Stephen has details next. Now at 6, questions still being asked surrounding the incident at the San Antonio Zoo that hurt at least seven people. How the zoo is responding to it all. And taking a look outside at live cam, it's starting off a little rainy with your morning commute. We'll have the forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you, Rise and Shine, everybody. It is Thursday, March 16th. Steph is out for the rest of spring break, and Alyssa Cole steps in. Yes, good morning. Thank morning. you for starting your morning with us, everyone. Good morning to you, too, Mark. Let's <laughs> jump right into weather. Mike has a lot to talk about, and things have not become, shall we say, less interesting in the forecast. No, not at all. Today's going to be a really interesting day over the course of really the next 24 to 36 hours, mm -hmm. and we're starting off with a little bit of light rain around the area right now, already detecting one lightning strike out there so we uh, you know don't be surprised if there are a couple of collapse of thunder but that's not going to be a big deal uh, this morning and it is just kind of a murky looking view out there we have some light rain again there's not a heck of a lot as of right now just a few of these uh, showers and one or two uh, thunderstorms going to take a closer look at these in a second but we did see a lightning strike here with that cell right there right around Uvalde so there are going to be a couple more here and there and then uh, in northwestern Bear County, there's this cell which is trying to take shape right there, just about to cross 10 outside 1604. And there may be even a lightning strike uh, trying to pop up with that within the next, say, 10 to uh, 15 minutes. And just these pockets of, again, some light rain. This is a lot of clutter right there around the, uh, the closer to the radar site. It's not going to be a huge deal as far as rain goes this morning, just enough to make the roads wet. Different situation later on tonight. Temperatures are averaging mid 60s right now. About 10 degrees above what it was at this time yesterday. Humidity is much, much higher out there. And we've got a good breeze coming in out of the south at 10, 15 miles per hour. And then some gusts on top of that. It's going to stay breezy throughout the rest of the day. And we will have just a scattered shower or two here and there. Oak is on the high side. Pine is moderate. The updated count comes out a little bit later on. And we do have the chance for severe weather late tonight. Scattered, potentially severe storms. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. An isolated tornado is possible, but not very likely at all. Temperatures are going to remain steady throughout the rest of the morning. We'll have that 30% chance for just a few light showers around here, just enough to make things slow going as you head on out to uh, work. And if indeed you might have school to go to 74 at noon, 80 high temperature today, a stray shower, stray storm here or there with a little bit of sunshine. Then the better chance of rain comes on in here with that big cold front that's moving through tonight. And I'll tell you what, by this time tomorrow morning, boy, oh boy, you're going to hear the wind and you're you're going to feel the cold when you step outside. It's going to be a tough morning and it's going to be kind of a raw weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, a lot of wet roads, problems. Yeah. We have big problems here now, Mike. 35 at Von Army on the south side. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide. You can see that we have back to back traffic, but we also have flashing lights out there in the distance. I actually want to step out for a moment, give you a look at what is taking place out there. Now, this isn't a very clear shot, but you can see uh, obviously those flashing lights, meaning first responders are out there on the scene. We are working to confirm some information, but right now we are hearing reports of a possible 18-wheeler uh, rollover or jackknifed. Uh, but again, this is along 35 southbound uh, near Vaughn Army Road, and you can see that right now traffic is moving, but um, I wouldn't say it's moving very fast. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you what's taking place out there because we've labeled that in the southbound lanes as you approach Loop 1604 again uh, along 35 near Vaughn Army Road. It's not causing major issues for drivers at this point, which I'm pretty surprised to report but we're going to continue to watch that area very closely throughout the morning. And thankfully, everywhere else here in town is still very quiet. Lots of green on the screen, plenty of construction. But the big problem now will be here at 35 at Von Army. You can see now with a lot of those uh, box trailers that are approaching the scene, it looks like things are going to be slowing down there in the next few minutes or so. We are working to get some information. I'll be speaking to our friends at Transguy to see if we can give us a little bit more details and possibly maybe another shot out there. But right now, just drive carefully. We are going to be sending a push alert. So have those KSAT apps handy and make sure those notifications are turned on. Again, this is 35 southbound near Von Army Road. Guys.
Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect after a man was stabbed on the city's southeast side. Happened just after one this morning on Goliad near Clark Avenue and Hotwells Boulevard. According to San Antonio police, a fight between the victim and the suspect started. That's when the suspect stabbed the victim on his left side. The victim went to a nearby car wash to ask for help. He was taken to a hospital. Police are still searching for the suspect. Crowds caught off guard at the San Antonio Zoo as part of a tree fall during a very busy spring break day. Viewer video shows the moments after the massive piece came crashing onto guests. It happened just after noon yesterday near the birds of the world habitat. The tree and the trunk that was originally left behind have been removed. Now, San Antonio fire officials say at least seven people were hurt when that tree fell, including one deemed a priority one, which typically means life threatening injuries. We're still working to learn more about their conditions this morning. The zoo's latest statement says its teams are investigating what caused that tree to break. We spoke to an arborist here in San Antonio who has not inspected that tree, but looked at video from our Sky 12. George Cardenas believes the tree may have been overweight and had decay in the union. That's where the branch and the trunk join. He says the situation is not uncommon. This part of uh, San Antonio in Texas, um, with the drought and the weather conditions, some of these trees, um, you know, they have a hard time adapting to this environment. Uh, cedar elm in the zoo, there's a lot of factors working against the tree from underground utilities, sidewalks, uh, soil compaction, people walking around the tree, uh, and things like that will reduce oxygen and water pockets in the soil and definitely minimize uh, mineral and nutrient resources available to the tree. Now Cardenas says the tree is a cedar elm, the most common tree found in Texas. He says based on its size, the branch like the one that fell could weigh anywhere from 1500 to 2000 pounds. In response to the incident, the zoo said in part, quote, we are working with our internal and external teams to investigate the cause of the breakage to prevent this unusual event from happening again. Our gratitude is with the guests, staff and first responders who assisted during this incident and our sincerest thoughts and prayers go out to those injured and their families, as well as those who witnessed this accident. A woman who was arrested for allegations of retaliation following that brutal dog attack in a west side San Antonio neighborhood has now been released from jail. Bear County court records show 26 year old Destiny Marie Cardona was released March 10th after she paid her bond of $25,000. Police say Cardona yelled at a witness in the attack and threatened to kill the witness and their family member. Authorities say Cardona is the sister of one of the dog's owners, Abilene Schneider. Now, since that deadly dog attack, the city of San Antonio wants to start a new program to tackle nuisance neighbors modeled after the existing Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART. It tackles the worst of the worst nuisance properties. The home of Depla Street, where the dogs live, had reportedly been the subject of more than 100 911 calls and a dozen of 311 calls in less than three years. However, a city spokeswoman that told KSAT the types of calls weren't severe enough to require DART, but this new program is different. It will focus on homes that have received a number of calls, even if they're low priority. Victims of the families of Robb Elementary School shooting are now asking the Department of Public Safety to release the records from that tragic day last May 24th. An attorney representing six victims' families filed a plea to a state district judge this week up in Austin. The families are pushing for the records because they're at the center of an ongoing lawsuit that multiple media organizations filed against the state agency. KSAT is a part of that lawsuit. However, DPS officials refuse to release them, saying there's a pending investigation exemption. One mother fighting for change after her son fell to his death from a popular amusement park ride. A settlement has been reached. ABC's Andrea Fuji E has more on what the victim's family is doing to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. This morning, the Florida amusement park ride where a 14 year old fell to his death is coming down. The boy's mother has been pushing for the Orlando free fall to be dismantled. She saw it for the first time yesterday. Unfortunately, when he passed, I wasn't there for him. So this is, I had to do this. I had to do this. I didn't want to come under these circumstances, but I had to do this. 
Last March, Tyree Sampson was visiting from St. Louis when he slipped off the ride, considered the world's tallest tower drop at more than 400 feet. A report found Tyree weighed more than 100 pounds more than the ride allowed. In order to fit, he rode while not being properly restrained. It's a horrendous ride. Should have never have been built. The family sued the amusement park and ride operator. They've now settled the case. But the family's attorney claims the ride manufacturer, a European company, is trying to evade responsibility. And please remember, it was the manufacturer said, you don't need seatbelts. On a ride that goes 420 feet in the air, tilts forward at 90 degrees, and comes down at 75 miles an hour. Tyree's mom is now working with a Florida lawmaker to pass the Tyree Sampson Act to require more regulations and worker training. It will save another child's and family life, so the extra restraints were needed prior to this happening. If the law passes, it would take effect this summer. The amusement park where Tyree died says it supports the proposal. As for the ride manufacturer, it did not comment. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Now to the severe weather after two major storms hit both sides of the country, leaving landslides and search and rescue efforts in both water and snow. One man had to be lifted out of the L.A. River as crews were fighting fast moving water. At least four apartment buildings were evacuated after a landslide left them hanging on the edge of a cliff. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, millions have seen more than two feet of snow, leaving houses and cars buried in snow. This morning, the Biden administration is demanding that TikTok's Chinese owners sell their stake in the company or the app could be banned in the United States. The demand marks an escalation from the administration as the White House looks to resolve national security concerns about the app. TikTok's chief executive is scheduled to testify before a House committee next week. Right now, 611, 65 degrees. And right now, it's tax time, but do you still have questions about filing? Next, all you need to know before filing your taxes and the latest changes. Let's go outside with live cam. Lots of changes on the way. You're going to want to keep that Weather Authority app handy on your smartphone. And Mike Ostrich has complete details coming up. Time check 615. The tax deadline is fast approaching. April 18th is the last day you can snail mail taxes or hit send electronically. We got a few extra days due to the weekend to file all that paperwork. As Leslie Hudson reports, there are some changes this year you need to know about. 2023 comes with a standard deduction increase to $12,950 for single filers and married couples filing separately, $19,400 for head of household filers. That includes single parents and $25,900 for married couples filing jointly. As for charitable donations, the $600 charitable deduction for non-itemizers, folks taking the standard deduction, has gone away. If you found yourself with hefty medical bills in 2022, you can deduct any medical expenses above 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. If you're self-employed, there are a bunch of deductions you can claim on your tax return, including travel expenses and the home office deduction. But if you're one of the millions of people who work remotely, you won't be able to claim the home office deduction since it's reserved for self-employed people only. And if you're on the road for work, you're looking at two mileage rates. 58.5 cents a mile applies for travel from January through June last year, and it's 62.5 cents per mile from July through December. Got kids? Well, here's a tax credit just for you. The child tax credit lets you credit up to $2,000 per dependent child under the age of 17. The income limit is $400,000 for married filing jointly and $200,000 for all the others. With just a few things to keep in mind before you file, I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. 617. And your weather right now is 64 degrees outside. Let's go straight to Stephen for a traffic update. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, guys, things aren't looking any better out here. We're taking a look at 35 at Von Army flashing lights, and I just spoke to my friends at Transguide. What we can tell you is that this crash is actually being reported along the access road, so it's not impacting the main lanes of traffic, but you can see some of those flashing lights out there in the distance. Uh, that's why we're really not seeing major slowdowns along the main lanes of 35 southbound. But, of course, uh, we are working to get some details. In fact, I believe we have
have Katrina Weber, who is heading to the scene to gather some information because we are hearing reports of this incident involving an 18 wheeler. More on that a little bit later on, but let's talk about what we're seeing here on the map. Now, remember, this is off of the main lane, so that's why we're not seeing a big backup there in the southbound lanes of 35 near Von Army Road. But we can tell you that that exit to Loop 1604 will be closed for a little while. It's unclear how long this incident will take to wrap up, but anytime an 18 wheeler is involved, you can guarantee we can guarantee you that it's going to take a little while. Giving you a wide look at the map, thankfully not else, a lot else is going on, but we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this incident here at 35 at Von Army. Um, unclear whether or not it was any slick roads out there, Mike, but uh, hopefully everyone's doing OK. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, you can just pretty much count on the fact that there is going to be uh, wet roads all morning long. We've had showers off and on, so just assume that the roads are wet. Can't let a good uh, blue bonnet and any paintbrush picture go to waste. That is an absolutely spectacular picture. So just keep this thought in mind as we go through tomorrow, especially with those cold temperatures and the windy conditions. It is murky out there this morning, and we're starting to see a bit more in the way of some of these showers that have started to uh, pop up. Over here, right around Sabinal, you can see that's the cell that came in from Uvalde, produced one or two lightning strikes. Nothing showing up as of right now, but don't be surprised if some of these do start to produce a couple of lightning strikes. This cell right here that is along 35 and heading up in toward divine as you can see starting to, to uh, intensify ever so slightly nothing too too strong around here but again that one may also start to produce a couple of lightning strikes then we've got a few more showers here around castroville and these are sliding in toward uh, sea world got a few of these showers leon valley going up in toward leon springs and then this one cell right here just inside 1604 there at hollywood park and this one has uh, a decent downpour and don't be surprised also if that one may uh, produce a lightning strike in the next say 10 15 minutes 20 minutes or so and continue to work its way off to the uh, north into the northeast. And there you can see that is just moving in toward Balverde, Balverde Road right there and moving off to the northeast. Elsewhere, we've got just a couple of scattered showers in portions of the hill country, and this will continue throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures are in the mid 60s on average, and we've got a decent breeze out there. Some wind gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. It's going to be breezy throughout the day. Computer model, we've got scattered showers off and on. The rest of the morning, primarily first portion of the day, yes, there's a chance for one or two of them later on this afternoon, but not as great of a shot. Then we go into tonight, and this is going to be sort of almost like a, a one-two punch, if you will, as the front moves on through here right around midnight, just after that tomorrow morning, and we will have a few showers and thunderstorms, and then even in behind some of these showers and storms lingering even in toward the time we go on the air tomorrow morning, and that's going to give us a very wet commute tomorrow, and that will last throughout most of the morning. Some of these showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here, then it's going to start to taper off, and then it's just going to be windy and cold. And some of those storms may be strong to potentially severe with uh, high winds and large hail being the biggest threats with that. And again, temperatures, we go from 80 today down to the low 50s. It stays very cold all weekend long, and low temperatures are going to be every bit as chilly down right around 40 give or take plus the rain tomorrow as more rain on Sunday a couple of showers on Saturday and the windy conditions uh, tomorrow so wind chills are definitely going to be a factor 74 degrees at noon today breezy couple of showers and again this morning even a couple of claps of thunder don't be surprised if you see that and then later on this afternoon 80 breezy Again, one or two showers, not as great of a chance for a shower this afternoon, but then that picks back up tonight and we will have showers, thunderstorms as the front moves on through here. Front's going to be coming through just after midnight. Some of those may be on the severe side. Again, high winds and hail, the biggest threats, and then 52 tomorrow during the afternoon. Temperature is going to drop like a rock in the overnight hours. Stays cold all weekend long. Good weekend to uh, hunker down. Of course, Caskey's going to be watching things later on tonight and we'll be here tomorrow morning. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 622, 64 degrees. Next, in case you couldn't make it to South by Southwest this year, we'll have the latest, including one San Antonio group who's taking their soul sound to the stages in Austin. Theo's nose was cause for alarm, so Dad brought Puffs Plus Lotion to save it from harm. Puffs has 50% more lotion and brings soothing relief. Don't let your nose get burned. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. 
Who says you can't go for bold without going broke? Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. Do Picks and helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Do Pixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Do Pixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Do Pixent. The South by Southwest Music Festival is underway right here in downtown Austin. And of course, Austin, one of the live music capitals of the world. So you can expect some big time artists and acts to take the stage here for the rest of the week. And if you want to participate in the music festival, all you got to do is head over to our website, kset.com, and we have a list of free concerts. Yes, free concerts. You don't need a badge to get into any one of these free concerts that are taking place here throughout the rest of the week. And also head over to our website to learn more about a local R&B duo that are hitting the stage here at South by Southwest. They're called Mojo Family, blending some San Antonio soul with some unique sounds from the New Orleans coast. All you got to do is head over to our website. We have full coverage there of South by Southwest. Also, don't forget to check out our live streams on our KSAT YouTube page. Reporting from downtown Austin, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And coming up later today on SA Live, the stars are out for the red carpet interviews with the cast of a new show called Lucky Hank. The SA Live crew was at South by Southwest to meet with them all before the world premiere of the show. Be sure and tune in today for SA Live right after the news at noon. 626, 64 degrees. A drug sweeping across southern states is causing amputated limbs and death. Still ahead, what doctors are saying it's mixed with. Plus, the latest in banking, one of Europe's largest banks, Credit Suisse, stock price at an all-time low. What this could mean for your money. And taking a look at the roads with TransGuide, there's an accident right there, I-35 and Bond Army. Stephen will have more details coming up. New aftershocks this morning after those bank failures. Coming up, why fears of a crisis are keeping the market on edge and it's being felt across the world. Outside with live cam, if you're just now waking up with that drizzle and light rain in the overnight hours, the roads are slick. And if you're bored by that, we've got thunderstorms <laughs> and snowflakes in the forecast for parts of South Texas over the next couple of days as well. So buckle up, folks. <laughs> Welcome back. 630 on your Thursday. It is March 16th. It is Friday Eve, folks. Are you all feeling it? Mm, yes. No. <laughs> no, I don't feel that. It'll be an interesting Friday Eve uh, tonight. And uh, just to qualify about these snowflakes, maybe in the hill country mixed in with some of the rain early uh, Saturday morning. Not anything that's <laughs> significant. No, 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 no. no, no freezes anything like that. Here's what it looks like when you uh, step outside as of right now and we've got uh, just kind of murky conditions. Although this picture's actually improved ever so slightly from earlier, it is very warm, very humid. Temperatures are up a good 10 degrees compared to where they were yesterday. Dew points are up anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees thanks to the southeasterly winds pulling in all this moisture around here. And we've got these scattered showers. They have been sort of uh, picking up in in coverage ever so slightly over the past uh, about hour. We've got just a couple of these spots here, one moving in toward Divine, a few down around Pearsall. There was the one from uh, Uvalde that's now moving over towards Sabinal. This one did produce a a lightning strike. So yes, there is the chance for one or two of these to be uh, to produce a, a couple of lightning strikes here and there. I thought this one might right there around uh, Hollywood Park or just to the east of uh, 281, but that just kind of fizzled out. And again, there's not a lot out there, but the roads are on the damp side just because we've had some showers off and on throughout the course of the morning and the overnight hours. Again, mid 60s on average all around the area. Decent breeze, wind out of the south, 10, 15 miles per hour. We've got some gusts, 20, 26 six miles per hour in Lost Maples and is going to be windy today. Oak is on the high side. The updated count comes out in about an hour or so. We have the chance for some severe storms. That's going to be late tonight, early tomorrow morning. The scattered variety. Actually, everybody has the threat for some sort of severe weather, but 
the middle portion, which does include San Antonio, is uh, the scattered severe storms. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. And today we've got showers around here with warm, humid conditions and then breezy. That's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the day. Then the cold front moves through tonight. We will have some of those storms again, some potentially severe. It's going to come through the front will just after midnight. Temperature is going to be plummeting in the overnight hours. It's going to be cold, rainy and just bone chilling tomorrow morning, staying cold throughout the day and staying windy throughout the day. The rain's going to taper off and then we go into the weekend cold couple of showers and that's going to be early Saturday morning, maybe mixed in with a snowflake or two in parts of the hill country, then a better chance of rain Sunday as well as Monday and staying bone chilling cold details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority still got a lot yeah. of problems out there. Right? Uh, unfortunately, Mike, we have to keep a very close eye on this because now we are starting to see some pretty big slowdowns there at 35 at Vulnerable army not a good situation here folks because keep in mind although this is not on the main lanes this is definitely going to impact of people who are traveling regardless along 35 southbound check out those flashing lights now we are still working to get some information here but from what we know that this does appear to be a rollover involving an 18 wheeler now uh, Katrina Weber is heading out there to the scene to get a little bit more details but the problem with this is anytime we have an incident involving an 18 wheeler it's unknown how long it will take to clear so if you have plans to travel down south along 35 near Vaughn Army, you will see some pretty big slowdowns. And that's because that exit to loop 1604 is closed right now. Now, this is the problem now. We're starting to see a little bit of a backup out there, as you can see from our map. So we're going to have to watch this area closely. It is getting a little bit busier now that the morning commute is getting moving. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, some relief, plenty of green out there, but still a lot of active construction spots as we've been talking about. So be on the lookout for Tech Cruise. But if you are traveling into San Antonio, we have better news to report here. I-10 eastbound, that journey from Bernie should take you about 24 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound, no need to hurry coming in from Mulverde. 27 minutes is what you can expect. And along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels, well, that's not too awful. 27 minutes for the drive time. But the big problem, again, is going to be right here at 35 at Von Army. I don't expect this to clear before the show wraps up, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully a, a better update will be reported pretty soon. But we are working to get those details for you, so just be sure to drive safe if you are traveling through that area. Mark Alyssa. Stephen, thank you. Terrifying moments as shots were fired into two mobile homes early this morning. Happened a little after 4 a.m. on West Military, not far from Highway 90. Police tell us a bullet landed on a couch in one of the mobile homes and another bullet landed on the bed of the other. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Today is the deadline to apply for the Texas Rent Relief Program. It was moved up almost two weeks earlier than originally announced because they are seeing more applicants than funding. The program helps people with rent and utilities. Qualifying first-time applicants could get up to 18 months of rent and utility assistance. That can be applied to past, current, or future bills. We have details on how to apply on KSAT.com. Now to more turmoil in the banking world this morning. The stock price of one of Europe's largest banks plunging to an all-time low. And the credit rating of a U.S. bank downgraded to so-called junk territory. ABC's Lindsay Watts takes a look at what it means for your money. Fears of a banking crisis are keeping markets on edge this morning. <laughs> both here and overseas. The stock price of one of Europe's biggest banks, Credit Suisse, plunging 24% to an all-time low Wednesday. That bank also has a big presence here in the U.S. Overnight, the firm announcing that it will borrow up to $54 billion from the Swiss Central Bank to shore up its liquidity and investor confidence. Back here at home, concerns still looming over America's regional banks. First Republic stock diving 21% after its credit rating was downgraded into so-called junk territory. Bloomberg reports the bank is now exploring a potential sale. The head of Wall Street's biggest investment firm, BlackRock, telling The Guardian, this is a slow rolling crisis with more seizures and shutdowns coming. But analysts say no matter what happens, your bank account is secure. If you have your money in First Republic, it is still safe. There's an implicit guarantee by the feds over the weekend that said depositors aren't going to get hurt here. We're gonna look at all the regional banks and make sure the depositors get their money back. Despite unfolding turmoil in the financial world, the economy remains strong. New data shows retail sales fell only moderately in February and wholesale prices posted an unexpected decline. Good news for inflation. 
all the indicators and everything under the hood suggest that the inflation should continue to moderate. If we're not at the end of the Federal Reserve's rate hikes, we're, we're getting pretty close. All eyes will be on the Federal Reserve when they meet next week. Another interest rate hike was expected before the banks failed. Now some believe the Fed could hold off. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Trending now at KSAT.com, a tranquilizer used on large animals like horses and elephants is now illegal. It was first seen in the Northeast and now it's popping up in Southern states. The drug almost always found mixed with fentanyl. Doctors say there are terrifying side effects, in some cases leaving people dead or if they survive with amputated limbs. People inject it, um, which a lot of people, that's the way they use their fentanyl, is it's very um, caustic to the tissues. Um, and so it tends to cause sores that spreads very quickly. You can get necrotic areas and that's when you start hearing about amputation. In a regional DEA report of southern states, there were more than 1,400 overdose deaths involving the traces of this drug. It's over 1,000 percent higher than the year before. And Mayor Ron Nirenberg is talking about mental health. It's all a part of episode three of our podcast series called From Living in Silence to Living Out Loud. Host Tally Dolge talks with Nirenberg about the positive shift in the conversation surrounding mental health and wellness in San Antonio. You can watch it now on KSAT.com and our KSAT YouTube or listen wherever you get your podcasts. Switching gears now to sports and a tough overtime loss for the San Antonio Spurs last night. They took on the Dallas Mavericks at the AT&T Center and things, <coughs> excuse me, went down to the wire. In the end, Silver and Black fell short in overtime. The final score, 137-128. Dallas gets the win. Next up for San Antonio, we'll be back in action tomorrow night here at home. They'll take on the Memphis Grizzlies. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Well, right now, your time is 640 and it's 64 degrees outside. Just ahead, important news about your retirement savings and why you should get started sooner than later. Time check 643. If you haven't started saving money for retirement yet, now's a good time to start. And while it can be challenging with our day-to-day -day expenses, ABC Lindsay Watts has some advice about how you can get started. No matter how old you are, you might want to consider investing in your retirement. And although it may seem premature, financial expert Farnoosh Tarabi says that young people should look into alternative retirement plans instead of relying on Social Security. These days, it's really important to save for retirement on our own. For many who are maybe in their 20s or just starting out, a Social Security is not a guarantee. Tarabi suggests considering all of the different investment options in the workplace, like 401k accounts or traditional plans such as Roth IRAs and brokerage accounts. The good thing about a 401k or other sort of workplace retirement account is that you can always adjust your contributions. Start with something small. Start with, you know, 2% or 3% of your paycheck. People in their 50s might want to consider different types of insurance options like long-term care insurance, which covers services that your basic health plan does not, including assistance with everyday tasks. People who invest in this starting in age 50 will very likely use it by the time they reach their 70s and older. And for those approaching retirement, it's not too late to start saving and investing on your own. Tarabi says it's best to have a backup plan for unexpected costs in the years ahead, including potential out-of-pocket health expenses. Lindsay Watts, ABC News. It's right now 645. And we're about to take a look at traffic pretty mm -hmm. soon. Stephen, what can you tell us? Well, you know, we've been keeping a very close eye on this issue here at 35 of Normie. Just take a wider look at Trans Guide, and you can see really not much has changed out there. But I did get some information from Katrina Weber, and just based on her early observation, she says that really the only area that's impacted does seem to be that exit at 140 to loop 1604. Uh, now, it does also look like, again, based on her early observation, that that truck was actually jackknife, and the trailer portion is on a grassy patch along that exit ramp. Uh, so hopefully everyone is doing OK out there. Soon no word yet if anyone was injured. Hopefully that's not the case, but you can still see that we have first responders out there working to get this cleared. But let's take a look at the map, because one of the things that we have not seen clear up yet is some of the buildup that's taking place along the southbound lanes as you approach Vaughn Army Road. Now remember, Loop 1604, that exit ramp is closed at this time, although that crash is not impacting the main lanes. We'll continue to keep a very close eye on it throughout the morning, and hopefully 
We'll see a better update soon, but giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. It's really not been a whole lot out there this morning, guys. It is spring break, so we know that situations really are few and far between, but when they do pop up, we'll be sure to let you know about it. Hopefully again, 35 here at Von Army. We'll see some resolution soon, but uh, again, Katrina Weber, based on her early observation, does say that this does look to be like a big rig that was jackknifed, and that trailer portion is on the grassy area near that exit. Okay, thanks for the update, yeah. Stephen. Yeah. Mike, what would you say to folks that are planning to go to SeaWorld or Six Flags Fiesta Texas tomorrow or Saturday? Bundle up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in the morning, we're going to have a lot of rain around here. It's just going to be tapering off in the afternoon. You can still go Saturday. Uh, maybe a stray shower here or there most in the morning. If, uh, if you want to do it one of the three days, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Tomorrow in the after, well, it, Saturday will probably be the better day because tomorrow's going to be really, really windy all day long, and so you'll be dealing with that uh, that wind chill. Here's uh, what it looks like right now, and as you can see, there's not. It looks like just kind of a normal morning, if you will. But on radar, we do have a few uh, showers that are continuing to sort of develop a little bit. And even down here, right around Catula, as you can see, there's a, a cell which is trying to kind of kind of get going, if you will, best way to put it. And there may be a couple of lightning strikes that that try and pop up with that and then go right up 35 in toward Pearsall. Got a few more of those showers, a couple of them over there just between uh, Uvalde and Sabinal and uh, even and a lightning strike once again is being detected right there. And then we've got a couple more and this one, this one cell right here in the northern portion of Atascosa County, right near Divine, that produced a lightning strike. So not a lot as far as lightning is concerned, but just don't be surprised if you uh, hear one or two claps of thunder. And then we've just got a couple of, uh, again, some scattered light showers in and around town up there around Leon Valley, 9410 on the west side. This is going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning. Just these few little light showers here and there, but just enough to make things very slippery since we haven't had a lot of heavy rain in a while. So all the, the dirt and oil and everything on the roads, mid 60s right now on average, well above what it was yesterday by a good 10 degrees. We've got some gusts out there right now. 18 at Bernie, 26 at Lost Maples. Going to be breezy throughout the rest of the day. We have temperatures that will stay steady the rest of the morning. We've got um, just a couple of light showers here and there. Some sunshine today limited, but still a shower or two is possible. Not very likely mid 70s at noon. We top off at 80. Very warm, very humid. That's setting the stage for some of those stronger thunderstorms later on tonight. So we keep a couple of showers around here throughout the rest of today. Some sunshine mixed in. Not a big deal as far as rain. Then we go into tonight and the front's going to be moving through just after midnight, but we will have some of those storms lingering in behind that. And as you can see, this is going to be just before we go on the air tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have a few of those cells moving on through here. It's going to be a wet commute tomorrow and that'll last in through most of the morning throughout the entire commute and we'll still have a few lingering showers by late morning. Get one or two maybe in the uh, in the afternoon, but it's not going to be a big deal as far as rain is concerned. Then we continue into tomorrow night into Saturday. And yes, that is a little bit of some snowflakes that may be mixed in with some of the rain out in portions of the hill country. It's not going to accumulate. It's not going to do anything more like a gee whiz, kind of chunky rain, as I call it. But that will be the situation in parts of the hill country. And that will be then early, early on Saturday. And then rain is going to start to taper off as we go on into the afternoon hour Saturday, pick back up again on Sunday and especially Sunday night into Monday. 74 at noon today, breezy. A uh, couple of showers scattered about here and there, and then a high temperature today up to 80, breezy, again, one or two showers. Then the rain's going to start to pick up later on tonight, and especially overnight as that front moves on through here. Temperatures will drop like a rock, basically. We're going to be going from mid-60s just after midnight down to the low 40s by right around this time tomorrow morning. Windy conditions, some rain, only 52 in the afternoon. Cold all through the weekend. And low temperatures in the 40s, some more rain Sunday into Monday, it's still staying cold. Are we ready for this, Lisa? I think we are. Okay. I think we're prepared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> confident. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you can put off heading out to, you know, amusement parks this weekend, you know. I see in this spring so. break. I mean, true. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to have some disappointing grit. kids. Grin right? and bear it. Yes, sir. 650, 65 degrees.
We're getting our hands dirty as we garden with KSAT. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we're planning a pollinator garden. What plants make great pollinators and some tips when it comes to planting milkweed. And taking a live look outside with live cam, it is going to start off to a little bit of a rainy morning, so be sure to grab a jacket with a hood or an umbrella. We'll be back. Coming up on GMSA at 9 today, Hollywood writers are helping local students develop their own TV shows. Tiffany Huertas will take a look at a unique program inspiring students that's today on GMSA at 9. And of course, we're getting ready to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, and we want to hear from you. Take out your phone and scan this QR code. It'll take you to ksat.com and a page where you can upload your St. Patty's Day pictures. We may show some of them on air here at KSAT, so be sure to tune in tomorrow right here on GMSA. And Stephen, we're talking about uh, wearing green ties and everything, so. Uh, well, Mike and I have this green screen to work with, so we'll, we'll try to figure out some sort of color there. But uh, let's get a look here at this traffic because we have been keeping a very close eye on the situation taking place at 35 at Von Army. Now, unfortunately, flashing lights have pretty much stayed there for the last hour or so. Now, remember, this is a scene where we did have an 18 wheeler that now, according to Katrina, Katrina Weber's observation, appears to have been jackknifed. It was right here along 35 South Bend at Von Army Road as you exit to Loop 1604. Well, you're not going to be able to do that. Remember, that's closed off right now. But as we give you a look at our map at 655, thankfully, there's not a lot else going on out there. Still several construction spots, of course, uh, but watch out for tech screws as the morning does get rolling. This is going to be a big incident. I imagine will linger around for a little while longer, so we'll watch it closely. But um, yeah, just be on the lookout for some of those damp roads as well. And this is going to be the case uh, off and on throughout the rest of the morning. We've got a few showers, light showers, one or two lightning strikes that are being detected right there by uh, Uvalde. There was one in that uh, little cell there in northern Atascosa County. These will continue to work their way out to the northeast. Again, not a lot this morning, just that sort of nuisance rain. Mid-60s right now. We're going to make it up to 80 later on today. Still a few showers are possible, breezy all day long. And then it's tonight when those thunderstorms move on in here. Some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side and then much, much, much. I'll use three muches in there colder <laughs> tomorrow Ooh. weekend. All right, folks, keep it here on KSAT. We've got you covered in the weather department. Have a good day.